Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fractured Feather Flock and our Wild Goose Chase, where we are finally beginning to establish ourselves on this island! Oh my goodness, like, I'm so grateful that we have so many trees, because that will no doubt provide us with so many opportunities to have enough nesting zones for all of our different nichelings. They should be able to have plenty of babies, but it has taken a little while to kind of get this group up and going and really get the food resources harvested up. Uh, we have tons and tons of food, but you know, it's, it's a hard business to have babies and it's a hard business to attract mates, but we finally have begun to make the most out of our experience here. So we're going to pick up right where we left off last time. If you guys are wondering what happened, check out the link in the video description for the playlist to our wild goose chase challenge. And if you would like to have a refresher of the rules of this challenge, you can find that in the video description as well with a link to a Google document that lists out all of the rules and all of the details for how we decide territory for the goals of our goose flock that they have overall and it will explain everything to you there so with all of that said let's carry on with our story especially with tross named after the beautiful albatross she has finally found her life mate my friends and i kind of think if they have a life mate I'm going to go ahead and change their icons now to green so that I know that that nicheling has a mate for the rest of their life. And even if that mate passes away, they will not get another mate, uh, as we've discussed in the past, just to give ourselves that extra challenge. And we have three mated pairs on the island right now with, let's pop over just to review them really quickly, Tross who has danced through the waters and the sandy bottom and has been able to uh, to fully fall in love with Tiarchi, who I'm really, really happy with. He's got some of the beautiful coloring. He's got these amazing exotic savanna horns that I think that Tross is very much attracted to. And hopefully they will have many healthy, happy babies. And Tross in particular, more than her sister Dove, is quite intrigued at making sure that the flock will grow in size overall, not just with their descendants, but Tross in particular can think about the importance of making sure that you have a lot of variety in the flock. As with most animals uh, that live in flocks and swarms and schools, they don't just care about their own offspring. They also care about the quantity, how many other animals are in their group. Because the larger the flock of birds that you are in, the larger the school of fish you are in, the larger the herd of zebra or antelope that you are in, the less chance that a predator could get you or your young. So Truss, more so than her sister Dove, is extremely interested in making sure that they expand the flock. The others, like, like these two, will have to stay out of her territory, but there's plenty of island to go around, and really, she's less interested in making sure that there's enough resources for everyone, and more interested in just making sure that there are more everyone's. So I do believe Tross is about to begin a legacy of summoning and calling as many nichelings to come join our flock as she can. Uh, and she's got full confidence because she's never run into a predator in her whole life, uh, even though she heard rumors of one that these two did run into. She has full confidence that they will be able to handle whatever is summoned by her honking, but she may begin uh, like the long honk a long bird call mostly made up of goose honking in which she will try to summon others to come and join them others who may be related to the fractured feather flock so that's what she's going to be doing and then over here with Dove, I realize that Dove is really giving birth, thanks to Zabidi's influence uh, of his red genes, to a lot of kind of flamingo-esque children. A lot of them who are kind of pink, uh, I think, I, I like, oh yeah, Swift has the ability to fish from her fishing tail. <gasps> That's so perfect. And then Inga actually has the ability to crack things open from her nimble fingers. So they really like, They've got a bit of a diverse diversity of what they can do. 
can they actually try to feed off the bottom the way that their uncle Eo can? But I think we might actually send the children into the shallows to fish and we might send them in here to like continue to try to unlock the platypus beak before we lose it. We're still very far away from unlocking it. And I just kind of like the idea that in this placid and safe island, the little lagoons that we have sort of act like uh, estuaries where the babies will be able to go and grow up. You can't play in in the water when you're itty bitty, but I could see them, especially as teenagers, maybe spending a lot of time in the water, especially if maybe the really like fish abundant and peaceful spots of the lagoon end up attracting like all of the teens because then they can start flirting with each other kind of eyeing up potential future mates and it'll also look like a bunch of flamingos playing in the water so i really like that idea and then after they find a mate they'd probably fly off and try to find their own tree or their own territory to establish so we're probably going to see that happen with these guys and dove and zbidi who are, are they the, yeah, they're the alphas because Dove actually managed to defeat her sister in a challenge. Um, but I feel like these two, how would they cope with Zyros, who's an intruder? Hmm, we'll come back to them in just a second. But then the third and final couple that we currently have on this island are Zizi and Chisel. And these two are roosting on top of their very first egg that they are expecting after ZZ and Chisel managed to fight off a Berina who was coming to eat them. And they have their own very small little territory. They're both Omegas of the tribe because they're both level three or they like both have reputation level three. But they get to have one, two, three little spaces starting kind of over here at the edge of the, the berry bushes to claim as their own, but they already have three distinct places where they have resources. So they could have three babies at a time before those babies grow up into teens. So lucky, lucky those two, pretty good spot, even if it isn't a tree and it is outside of both of the, the main females territories. And then finally over here, we have Zyros. Zyros is blind. He has a lot of capabilities though and he is an intruder. He has just intruded on Dove's territory and she is not going to have anything to do with this. Like this is, this is unacceptable. So normally Dove, who is currently roosting on an egg, would immediately aggressively try to chase him away, but she doesn't actually have any attack. So she wants her mate Zabidi to go and chase this intruder away. But if Zabidi attacks, he knows that his Fangs will most certainly cause death upon this young creature. And as he glances about himself at his, his daughters, his son, as he thinks about the child that they will have, as he thinks about the land that they have around them, he finds himself somewhat conflicted. So let's begin our story today there. <gasps> and we have a new baby! Where's the baby? Oh, this little group had their baby. How exciting. <gasps> Look at her. Her name is Toad. She legitimately was just born with the name Toad. I kind of... What? <laughs> I feel so bad for her. She shouldn't have the name Toad. Like, that's not fair. She's just a little thing. She doesn't need that kind of burden on her. But let's look over and see what her, her stats are. Uh, poor Toad. Well, you know what? There is. The, let's name her Tawny after the Tawny Mouth Frog. So her name's going to be Tawny, not Toad. She has fishing tail. She has a wing. Look at that. She has brown horns, no white body. So let's see. Wing is two. She doesn't have webbed hind legs. Because remember, we're breeding towards our, our ultimate goose here. She doesn't have the beak. She has two attack from her antlers. So she's a little bit, it's five. She's a little bit of an upgrade on her parents. And she actually has five reputation. One for the brown horns, two for her natural attack. So that's three. And then four, five, because she gets two points per wing. So there we go. She actually, having a wing is definitely going to help her. 
There we are. So she is part of the Fractured Feather Flock, even if her parents are part of a lineage that begun to forget about uh, ever taking to the skies. But how fun is that? All right, I think Chisel's gonna come over and immediately get some food. And we'll go ahead and have ZZ uh, perhaps proclaim his love for his mate and also help the food. And then little Tawny, I think, is gonna climb, clamor up here just for a second and kind of look around, hopefully not get eaten by anything. Uh, but all right, so our little Omega group is doing well. And yeah, Tawny should be a beta because she is stronger than her parents. And then over here, as the nest begins to decay next to him, and as Zabidi has been told by his mate Dove, chase the intruder away because she is extremely agitated about this. In fact, we'll go ahead and let her let out her anger. So she's honking and trying to chase away this stranger who has just appeared. Zabidi is going to jump over here. And he is the only one of like he like and actually this is a good lesson for Swift and Inga who also have the toxic fangs. If Zabidi lifts his paws to attack Zyros, this blind wanderer, then he will definitely cause severe damage. With these fangs come great responsibility to protect his family, to protect the flock. But I do think that Zabidi is assessing the situation. We have one, two, three, four solid, immediately seen uh, pieces of food just within our own zone. Five if you count, yeah, actually five, six, because we have the termite mound and we have the bunnel hill. So we have six potential offspring or helpers that we could support here. And there are more nests in Dove's very large territory. So instead of attacking this young blind one, who clearly is at a loss of the world, uh, he doesn't have, by the way, he does not have any genes that we're looking for. So we wouldn't want to breed with him whatsoever. In fact, he actually has melanism and we want to go with the albinism if we were going to pick melanism or albinism because we're going for a white domesticated goose look. Uh, he doesn't have anything that he could contribute, but he does have the ability to collect. He does have a little bit of strength. He does have the ability to dig and he does have the ability to crack open nuts. And so Zabidi, even though he is often deferred to his the alpha leader mate, Dove, who is also in control of all of the flocks, I do believe that he would offer Zyros peace. And in exchange for that, Zyros will never breed, so we'll go ahead and put down little white icons to note that he'll never breed, but he has been offered a home here in exchange for helping to establish the territory better, to repair the nests that we have, and to take care of those things. So I think we'll have to get Dove if she doesn't give birth. Yeah, she won't give birth next. We'll get her down, we'll have her make another nest, and those nests are going to represent how many offspring and how many helpers we can support. So I actually need at least two more nests. Oh wait, we already have one nest over here. So one, two, three, four. And then we have one, two, three, four already. So we'll make a fifth nest and maybe even a sixth nest. We'll make how, yeah, we can support one, two, three, four, five, six, just right here. So we'll make six nests. And because the pregnancies last so long, I can make multiple nests that way. And it can reflect how many children or how many helpers we can keep in our tribe at once. All right. So that's useful. All right, and then speaking of children, we'll let Zyros go ahead and immediately, uh, immediately begin helping by coming over here and cracking open that nut. We'll have Zabidi gather up some food. The babies are just wandering around being babies. So they can't really do much, but they can jump around. Inga, who has the ability to crack, attack, and collect, it's raining, so we'll have her collect up some fresh food. And then Eo is going to continue his wandering towards a tree of his own, but he is going to continue to kind of peck and dig and search. And we may, he may actually end up taking one of his, I think he could take one of his nieces as a mate, which is never ideal, but it happens in these tribes in order to try to keep that platypus beak going. So probably swift. Yeah, we'll have to see. All right, there we go. 
And since I, let's see, we've got one, two, three, four places where I know immediately we can gather food from here. So I'm actually gonna have Tross go ahead and start making more nests. If she can, oh, we need more nesting material, phooey. All right, Tross, are you about to give birth? No, she's not. So we desperately need to start collecting more nesting material. <laughs> oh, that's another good limiting factor. Gosh, okay, so technically Zabidi shouldn't be with us, but I just had to alter that rule to kind of make it work. So it'll, it'll just have to be the way it is. All right, well, let's come down here. We still have two days left on her pregnancy. So we'll have her continue to gather up nesting material. Ditto on her mate. Oh my gosh. Yes, we have so much food over here. Holy cow, Tross, you really did pick, I think, maybe even a stronger nesting area than your sister. And then over here, I'm gonna have, I think, who's who's the better collector, Zizi? No, it's definitely Chisel. So Chisel's going to use her expertise to pick all of this food. And then Zizi, one, two, one, two, three. Zizi's going to clear the, t the grass around their territory so you can figure out what's gonna happen. And little Tawny is gonna jump around. There we are. And then finally, Chili is old enough to help out with this whole gathering of the food stuff. And Dove, two days left to her pregnancy. So I'll have her help gather too. Because this is important to make sure. Like, I, I feel like we've been long overdue for expanding the tribe territory anyway. All right, now that it's not raining, we'll gather there. We'll even come over and gather at the edges here. There's another, see, here's another one of the berry bushes. And we can use the nest as kind of markers to be like, there's resources here. All right, meanwhile, haha, -ha! Eo, good job. More food there. Was that a predator? It was a balance bear. <laughs> oh, showing up just to give me a bit of a heart attack. Okay, come on, Eo. We'll continue to move him along. And hopefully he can make a nest and start attracting mates as well. And then Dove is going to give birth, so we don't want to keep her down here too long. There we go. She'll jump up here. And I'm actually going to have Zyros, as much as he can, help with clearing out some of the grass so that we can build him his nest. Because we have... Oh, we need to repair this nest over here. Whew. I need to have these nichelings expanding their territory then if we're going to have any hope of being able to <laughs> do all of the things that we need. Maintaining the territory is actually a really cool thing to do, I think. All right, so one, two, three, four nest. I already have one, two, three, four. Eo has left, so I need one more nest over here. Yeah, Eo, Eo is actually no longer part of that group. He is off to go find his own mate out of, out of family territory, so that's fine. And then I can have three babies and or helpers right here just straight off the bat which is awesome and Tross is also going to give birth so I'll have her jump up and I'll let her go ahead and call a crabbit has come to witness this oh dear all right and then I'll have chisel she'll scooch over and then Azizi can continue he's kind of like He's, he's, I feel like they have a little simple life over here, but they're very happy about their baby Tawny. Just a little bird growing up in the wilderness. But all right, let's go ahead and see. We have Dove getting ready for her first child, or her, her fourth child, and then Tross getting ready for her first. What will it be? <gasps> She's so cute, but darn it, she inherited some weird things, and her name is Z Z Z Z Z Z. Oh, it's like her. It's like somebody sneezed while naming her. Um, gosh. Okay, so we have Albatross. We have Tiarch. We're gonna go ahead and name her Turn. And that little Turn, unfortunately, inherited a deformed paw. Very frustrating. But she also like she, she can hardly do anything. <laughs> Dang it. But she inherited, of all things, a water body. And she has recessive platypus beak and recessive savannah horns now. Huh. Not the baby I was hoping for out of those two, but an interesting result of where our genetics could take us. And then over here... Yes! 
Look at you! A double-winged baby! We needed you so badly! A double-winged, fanged little baby boy. He is just, hello, little guy. What am I gonna name you? Uh, maybe Hawk. I'm gonna go ahead and just go with Hawk. And then let's see what his influence on the tribe would be. Let's see. Oh, and you know what? When we actually had Tross lose two influence to Dove, I should have added that to Dove. Yeah, we'll do that in the future where you can gain and lose influence points depending on if you're going to pick a fight with the others or not, uh, which only happens now and then. So we have, let's see, four points straight away for the wings. We have no beak. We do not have recessive any things that I need. So I think ironically a hawk is only out of four. <laughs> no, that's not even as much as some of his siblings. Like, Inga has more because she had brown. Aw, oh, dang it. Okay, well, at least he can fly. That's a good thing. All right, so we have the birth of little baby boy Hawk. We have Eo coming on over to also establish his own territory. Uh, I just realized that he can't fly into a tree, which is very sad, but he can use the tree as a food source, even though he can't really gather from it. But he could try to summon a mate there, I guess. Uh, curses. He could possibly try to make this his territory. Poor Eo. I forgot that he can't actually do anything over there other than, like, search for worms. All right. Well, interesting. Fun. Okay, let's go ahead and just get everybody lined up where they're going to be next. There we are. Oh, I can make the final nest. And speaking of making the final nest... There we go. We'll go ahead and have Zyros continue to help out. We're finally starting to clear the family territory. That balanced bear, or this peaceful bear, could care less what we think about it. There we go. And then... There. So, yeah, we do need to kind of expand the family territory and maybe have, like, a marker so I know how far it goes. Because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like, it goes all the way out to the edges. She has a ton of territory. We should probably put down nests to mark it. But all right, Dove is going to go ahead and land and coo at Zabidi over their excitement of a flying child. Ooh, apparently if Zabidi didn't like that. So instead, she will reflect upon how lucky they are to have an expanding and varied flock. And he does like that. He's more about thinking about the diversity of the family, it seems. And we'll let little Hawk jump down. He'll be a good flyer in the future. All right. And then over here, Tawny can start following her mom. I think clearing the grass away is going to be a super important phase of all of this. And even though I don't think their daughter can do diddly squat other than swim, I think that's very exciting for Tross and Tiarchi. Oop. <gasps> and we just unlocked Birdbeak. Are you kidding? Oh my gosh. Okay, we need Platypus Beak, but Birdbeak is there as a backup. Thank goodness. And these two are very excited about their daughter even if she doesn't quite have the skills that they were like looking for. So that's very thrilling. But all right, there we go, guys. The family has advanced. It is not quite going in the directions that I thought, but I'm sure we will be able to get a goose nonetheless. So thank you guys so much for joining me. If you could, do please leave a like for our ever-expanding wild goose chase. And if you would like to uh, join us for this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.